Hi everybody, this is Rosa Sharon and I'm back again with another movie review. Um, uh, movie, I mean series review. I just recently watched Bojack Horseman seasons 1 and 2. I do realize that there are 6 seasons, but I've only finished 2 so far. So, I'm not going to go into the actual plot too terribly much if you're familiar with it, but it's an adult animated show starring an anthropomorphic horse named Bojack. And Bojack was a star in the 90s, part of a show called Horsin' Around. And in real life, he's just not likable at all. He comes across as kind of conceited jerk. And when we delve into his childhood my lord, his parents, good God. I mean, whoa. I've seen depictions of this before, but never this way in Western animation. And I have to say, I really love Bojack. I, I had heard so many good things about it, and now I can see why. Because it's absolutely brilliant. The animation's beautiful. Um, I love the characters. I really feel for Bojack. It just breaks my heart to see him suffer like that. And then him sabotaging himself. Because I know where that comes from. Speaking from personal experience. And it, it just is heartbreaking, honestly. And... I have to say, I could see a lot of myself in Bojack, too. And I thought, I really hope I don't come across as that kind of person. But I could just see myself because of his upbringing. His parents were a lot worse than mine, but I get where it comes from, psychologically speaking. Um, He's got this worthless... Um, renter or friend named uh, Todd and well actually Todd's more complex than what you would like to give him credit for and we see the characters develop over time we've got other characters involved like um You've got Princess Caroline who works in the office. She's a go-getter and she um, takes the bull by the horns and doesn't take any guff from anybody. She's a career woman. And this is another thing that really resonated with me being 43. And it, I thought, oh, ouch. Because there were a lot of things that, you know, were said to her that have, have been said to me and worse. And, yeah, that they do hurt. <laughs> so, I can relate to that immensely. I mean, there's so many things in the show that are just so real and so raw. And just um, very hard-hitting. But, beyond that, it also has a lot of really heartfelt moments and... Um, also other moments that make you think, oh, why did you do that? And you just, you're shaking your head about it. Why did you do that? And then you know why he did that exactly. Um, but I am hoping to watch the, f um, remainder of the seasons that are av available. Uh, we'll see where his journey takes him. Is that the first you just, you think, Oh, uh, there's, he's not going to have a turnaround. There's, there's not going to be any kind of redemption for this character or any kind of, um, likable qualities that he has, but that he has a lot of like, likableness, weirdly enough. There, there are a lot of things within him that, that make him, um, very tactile, I think, as a character. Um, same thing with Todd and same thing with, um, uh, Diane, when we meet Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter, Mr. Peanut Butter 
is a golden retriever who, who played in another sitcom called, um, what was it? Mr. Peanut Butter. I think it was called the Mr. Peanut Butter Hour or something like that. Um, but the two have kind of this frenemy sort of relationship going on. And then you've got, um, another character who, um, turns out to be Bojack's girlfriend, an owl. And, uh, I forget what her name was. Uh, and then you've got Charlotte, who, um, uh, was, uh, just, he loved her from a distance. There's a, a plot where he, he goes out of his way to go meet her in Arizona. And, um, yeah, that, that one was... Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that, that one really played with a lot of emotions, I think. It was probably my favorite one, because we, we see so much of him revealed through that, and his true character, and just uh, all the um, turmoil <laughs> he has been through, all the trials and tribulations, and um, the triumph that comes through. Um, the opportunity he gets, of course, um, I mentioned another character named Sec Secretariat, his idol, um, cause in second season, a little bit of a spoiler, he's actually given the opportunity to, pl to play Secretariat and the director, she pushes him and there was a scene that and one of my absolute favorite moments is, Bojack is, they're having kind of a, an intimate conversation and it, it's very, very real and, um, organic and Bojack, he has a, a little bit of a pause. He's being pensive and he says, I didn't know I had it in me. And then she said, I did. And it just, it just I thought it was just so deep. I mean, there's, there's just such really good writing in this show and a lot of it is very punny, very um, <coughs> clever in that way, and kind of dad joke territory, but I like dad joke territory. It's enjoyable to me. And just as an Xer, I mean, I think there are a lot of things that Xers can really latch on to here, just given the, the 90s versus today, and then a lot of that is revealed in the, the show's duration but i'm looking forward to seeing the remainder of bojack and like i said what when the scene is journey in full because now i'm i'm invested and i i love all the characters i really do and i just i want the best for them and you you're happy when they're happy you're sad when they're sad you struggle you feel their struggle and and the struggle is very relatable and it and the crux, the, the real, not the crux, but the heart, the matrix of this thing <coughs> is just how cruel media can be. The, the whole media realm. Um, but I just think society in general as a whole is also very fickle. And it shows that too, just, you know, given age and stereotyping and pigeonholing, you know, the whole gamut. It just, it really runs the gamut in everything that it encompasses that. And that's what really gives the show its humanness, I think, and all of that um, comprehensible uh, quality that, that, we all latch onto it. I mean, I think there's something for everybody here. Um, <laughs> it doesn't subject itself to being too body or um, cruel or use too much profanity. And it, use, it uses profanity in such a way that it's merited. It's, it's not just profanity for profanity's sake. You know, that I like that too. 
because it, it, it doesn't you don't need that and and this is a good adult animation this is an excellent adult animation if you haven't seen it see it because it if you want to tell a, a really excellent story a really fantastic story and learn about timing and learn about how to um do color with um animation itself and i like what they did here because it the uh the color that they use is it looks like it's all watercolor and i'm not sure how they did that but i really love that because everything looks like a painting and of course there's a, a scene you know second season um during something i can't say that happens and of course princess carolyn gets distracted and she's looking at this thomas kincaid impressionist uh, painting it's her own little perfect world. And of course, there's a lot revealed in that too. I'm like thinking, gosh, this show is just so psychologically deep and thoughtful and <coughs> extremely magnificently produced. And just the creator of the show should do another one. I hope they do. And um, I, I love how surreal it is, but I also love how actual and graspable it really is so here's looking forward to the um the next few seasons and i will review them as soon as i've done watch done as soon as i'm done watching them yeah i can speak english well it's my first language <laughs> until next time <laughs> i'll prosper ciao <laughs>